Hello, I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. And this is the episode that uh, things finally get uh, a little more interesting. In previous episodes featuring this 1964 Mercedes 230 SL, we've mainly discussed some of the auxiliary systems. We've uh, talked about the design, layout, and fitment. But in this video, we start putting it all together. And so that's where it gets fun, in my opinion, is uh, once we've done all the legwork and the, the calculating everything, now we just get to bolt it all together and, and wire it up. So let's, uh, let's give you a little uh, overview or, uh, you know, of our starting point. Well, this is the engine bay, just about ready to receive the electric motor as well as the battery racks and uh, the rest that's going to go in here. And of course, on the driver's side over here, we have the things that uh, have been in in a while. We've got our vacuum pump, the power steering. And on the other side here, we have the auxiliary battery. We have the uh, coolant pumps, which were just added since the last video. And then we have our um, contactor board and of course our 12 volt fuse block, so forth. And of course our motor mounts, which were in the vehicle when received, these are being reused. And there's the bell housing, which we will be bolting the adapter and motor to. So, Let's, uh, let's take a look at a few other things before we move on with the uh, motor installation. Okay, this is a shot of the passenger side of the trunk. There's the uh, Elcon PFC 5000. It is bolted in place and wired. And the wiring is just uh, in place, uh, nothing's been loomed or anything. That happens later in the game when we do all the cosmetic stuff. But uh, it's uh, it's ready to go. So the charge port is mounted. It's in the location where the original gas fill was, and so it's mounted and wired and ready to roll. Well, here's a shot of the high performance electric vehicle systems AC 35 times two installed in the Mercedes. Now, the uh, five liter Ford that came out of here was a really, really tight fit. Um, this was a tight fit, not as bad as the V8, but what causes the problem is trying to get the uh, flywheel and clutch, everything into the bell housing and clearing the steering rack. So we actually had to uh, partially dis disassemble some of the mounting for the steering rack in order to get uh, the adapter and flywheel and clutch and everything to fit in there and, uh, and clear everything. You can also see on the right-hand side there, the, um, the steering comes very, very close to the bell housing and the adapter. So really a tight fit. So the motor is held in place, strapped in place, mounted in place. The uh, shaft turns freely, um, so we've got a nice good connection to the uh, transmission, no binding, and something that's kind of uh, interesting about this particular conversion, we've done this on others, but the battery rack is actually part of the motor mount. In other words, the battery rack is designed to uh, create rigidity with this uh, motor mount. So it's part of that um, anti-torque setup 
and it keeps everything rigid and from there being any twisting. So that's what's next. We need to uh, install the front battery rack. There's actually two pieces to that. There's the main section that has the three um, sections to it. And then there's the front one that has the six cells in it. They can be installed together or separately. Uh, in this final setup, we're going to install them separately. That's where we are right now. And so stick with us.